My Roommate by Heo Itzmeo. It's a blustery fall evening, and I'm walking home alone. It wasn't this cold a few blocks ago, but the air around my apartment is thick, oppressive, and frigid. I open the door to my apartment and sit down on the shabby couch. Almost everything is falling apart because my roommate never pays her share of the rent, and I have to cover her half as well as mine. That doesn't leave me with a lot of money. I turn on the old TV, but it's static on every channel. I hate my roommate's stupid pranks. Not only does she not pay me, but she also tries to make my life a living hell. I walk down to her room in the basement. I've never really understood why she likes it down there, but she managed to make it somewhat okay by getting a nice carpet put in and wallpaper plastered on. Technically, I put it up, because I thought she'd like it, but she seemed to go along with it. After all the redecorating, it looks pretty good for a basement. I look around, but she's nowhere to be found. I trudge upstairs, exhausted from work, and as I sit down at my computer, I hear her footsteps moving down to the basement. It's about five minutes before she starts screaming. I put my pillow over my head and groan. It's been like this ever since I killed her. Family Traditions for Christmas by Kenneth0505 Every family has a Christmas Eve tradition. All the men in my family would get up early, drink coffee together, and go hunting. I remember my first Christmas Eve outing like it was yesterday. I was 13 and could hardly wait till dawn. My dad had been waiting years to include me in the hunt, and I believe he was more excited than I was. As we all sipped our hot coffee and discussed where we were going hunting that morning, I was in pure bliss. I was finally considered a man, and I had all intentions on being the one who brought home the meat for Christmas dinner. Daylight found my father and I walking slowly and stealthily. That's when we heard our prey, and he looked at me with a smile on his face and he said, you know what to do, son. Make me proud. I moved closer and closer until I was in arm's reach. Just then, I spooked the prey and thought he would run. So I lunged, tackled my quarry, and drove my knife into its neck. Blood flowed as he bled out, and my dad walked up and slapped me in the back and said, Good job, son. That's a big one. It'll feed the whole family tomorrow. We drug it back towards the house. As we cleaned and quartered my kill, I was being praised for my stealth and skill. My dad told everyone, he's a chip off the old block. I couldn't wait for dinner tomorrow to see the look of satisfaction on everyone's face. The next morning, we opened our presents and I could still smell dinner cooking. It smelled delicious. My mouth watered just thinking about it. When it finally came time to eat, the table was set and in the middle was that delicious roast. As I passed the potatoes, Uncle John said, I'm glad you got him. I've been eyeing that playground all year. I knew you would get a chance at your first kill there. The boy was skittish. It's a wonder you got that close to him. I nodded with a smile and went back to eating. Mother sure knew how to make a mean roast. My son doesn't believe in Santa anymore. By Nope Too Creepy. Santa isn't real. The three words you use to crush a child. At a certain point in my childhood, I heard it from my friends, classmates, cousins, and eventually even my parents. Apparently, I had reached the age where I was old enough to know the truth. But something never sat right with me. Maybe it was the vivid dreams I would have. In those dreams, I would see Santa. It would start with the thump 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 on the roof. After carefully tiptoeing out of bed, I would peek around the corner to our fireplace. Out would come Santa himself, in his bright red suit. I even remember him waving at me. Unlike most kids, I was okay with Santa not being real. I always woke up with a bad feeling after having one of these dreams. It was the kind of feeling you would get in your chest when you knew you were in trouble, even though I knew I had done nothing wrong. As I got older, the dreams became less and less frequent, until I simply stopped having them altogether. Christmas became less about the magic, and more about the consumerism. The race to check everything off your list and get the best deals. Last year was no exception. Per usual, my son, Tommy, wanted the newest game that the rest of his classmates were expecting to receive. Are you going to ask Santa for it? I remember asking him, with a sly grin. Tommy hung his head, bearing a dejected frown. Tommy? I asked gently, rubbing his back. What's the matter? Santa isn't real, Dad. I was caught off guard. Tommy was about the age I was when I found out, but I thought maybe he still believed. I wanted him to maintain the glee of Christmas only a child can feel, for as long as possible. But alas, here it was, the moment every Christmas celebrating parent dreads. I decided to be honest, but comforting. Well, Tommy, maybe he doesn't exist in the way you think. What do you mean? He might not be the big, jolly guy in the suit, like in the movies, 
But as long as you believe in Christmas, he can always be real in your heart. I'll be honest, I didn't know what I was saying. Again, I was caught off guard, and didn't exactly have a speech planned. Fortunately, what I said seemed to work. Tommy smiled and nodded energetically. That was a relief. He was a good kid. He deserved to enjoy the holiday as much as possible. It wasn't long until the big night was at our doorstep. My wife and I tucked Tommy into bed. Remember, Santa's coming tonight, my wife said to Tommy. He looked up at me. I gave him a reassuring wink and nod. He smiled big before returning the nod and saying goodnight to both of us. That night, I stayed up late, watching some of my favorite Christmas movies besides a roaring fire. I figured I had to, in order to sneak the gifts under the tree, going along with the festive charade for what would likely be the last time, now that Tommy was realizing the truth of things. At some point, I must have nodded off on the couch. I woke up and looked around, trying to shake off the haze that filled my head. I could see through the window that it was still the dead of night. It was at that point I realized I had not woken up organically. I was woken up by a sound, which I heard again, much more clearly. There was a rustling to my side. I carefully turned my head to face the direction of our tree. Staying beside it was a figure, donning a red jacket and hat. I sat there in disbelief. At first, I thought it was my wife playing some kind of prank or getting into character for Tommy, but I quickly realized that couldn't have been her. My wife isn't nearly that tall and lanky. This person was almost as tall as our seven-foot tree. The red jacket hung off their slender, bony figure like pounds of loose skin. I still sat there, my mind trying to decide whether any of this was real or if it was just a sugar-fueled nightmare. It immediately brought me back to my childhood, to the dreams I used to have. Before I can process another thought, the figure moved. I watched as it raised its long arm up to an ornament on the tree. It was one of those ornaments that contained a photograph, to be specific. It was a photo of Tommy. A hand began to slowly poke through the empty sleeve of the red jacket, revealing a set of dark, sharp fingers. I felt dread overtake me as I watched the hand firmly grasp my son's photograph. I tried to act brave, but all I could muster was a quick, desperate breath. With that, the creature shot its head in my direction. My blood immediately ran cold. I stared back into a pair of glowing red eyes that contrasted the dark, decaying flesh of its face. It must have not noticed me before, because upon discovering me, sitting there, paralyzed with fear, it smiled. The smile was subtle, but was enough to reveal a set of razor-sharp teeth and a black, serpent-like tongue. It turned its decrepit figure in my direction and began to approach me. I heard the joints of this monstrosity popping and snapping with every exaggerated step. Before I could blink twice, it was bent down and we were face to face. I could barely breathe. I thought I was going to pass out due to sheer lack of oxygen. This thing held up the photo of Tommy and widened its insidious smile. With a deep and sinister voice, it spoke. I'm here for the boy. It wanted Tommy. Whatever this thing was, it wanted my son. I conjured up every ounce of bravado I could find and replied with a firm, no, leave. It cocked its head as if in confusion or perhaps amusement. Before it or I could say another word, I heard something. Dad? I slowly turned my head to see Tommy standing at the foot of the stairs. He had woken up and stumbled upon us, and now there he stood, with nothing between him and the atrocity that had made its way into our home. I felt the cold, scaly hands of the creature wrap around my face and heard its vile voice one last time. I found him. I leaped off the couch, drenched in sweat. My heart was about to beat its way out of my chest as I frantically spun around the room. There I stood, in my family room, where I had begun the night. The sun was out now, beaming upon the tree, illuminating the room with vibrant colors. It was just a nightmare. I caught my breath and ran up to Tommy's room. There he laid, sleeping peacefully. I shut his door and made my way back to the couch, letting relief wash over me. I rushed to place the gifts under the tree. Shortly after, my wife and Tommy had both awoken. We enjoyed a cozy Christmas morning, exchanging gifts, listening to our favorite seasonal songs, and enjoyed a delicious breakfast. As we ate, Tommy tugged on my sleeve, bearing a huge, excited grin. You were right, Dad. What do you mean? About Santa, he said. You were right. He is real. I stared back at my son feeling a knot develop in the pit of my stomach. Last night, I saw you talking to him before you fell asleep. He talked to me too. W what did... I stammered, collecting myself as best I could. What did he tell you? He said it was great to finally see you again, and he can't wait until next year, so he can see us again. 
my Christmas presents were rotting by E A P A T B P. I did all the Christmas stuff pretty early this year. It's not even the first week of December, and I already have everyone's gifts all wrapped up. I even bought the good wrapping paper, none of that dollar store paper. I'm talking about this sparkly paper that costs about ten dollars a two. Yeah, it's overboard and probably a stupid thing to waste ten dollars on, but hey, I figured since I wasn't waiting until the last minute that I deserved to use pretty wrapping paper. My family was flying in from Chicago to stay with me through the end of November and the entire month of December. Normally, I'd want to cry thinking about spending so much time with them, but I was actually very excited about it this year. I finished up the wrapping on Sunday night. I had about two more things that I'd just gotten and they needed to be wrapped, so I finished that and then I added the last two presents to the pile under the tree before I went to bed. On Monday morning, I got a text from my sister saying they weren't able to catch their flight because our dad got food poisoning, so they were going to arrive a few days later than they anticipated. I told her that it was fine. In fact, I was glad to hear that they were going to be getting here later than they thought because I wasn't done setting up the two guest rooms yet and I really didn't want to hear my mom complain about the beds not being done correctly. So I spent Monday afternoon making sure that everything was perfect. I was finally done. I had dusted every shelf, wiped down every mirror and window, I vacuumed every rug, organized all my books, and I even bought new shower curtains. I wasn't yet sure of the exact date that my family would be arriving, so I sent my sister a text to ask, but she didn't reply, so I assumed that by Tuesday afternoon they would get here. Tuesday morning, I was woken by a peculiar smell coming from downstairs. I woke up and made my way down into the kitchen, thinking that maybe I had forgotten to throw away the bag of old food that I had cleaned out of my fridge, but it was gone. I had taken it out the night before, so what was that smell? It was everywhere. In the kitchen, the pantry, the laundry room, the halls, and the living room. It was the strongest in the living room. As I walked into the room, I gagged. It was awful and unlike anything that I'd ever smelled before. I ran back into the kitchen and grabbed a clean dish towel and held it up to my face as I walked back into the living room. Then I noticed the Christmas presents. There was a puddle of something leaking out of the presents and onto the green rug underneath the tree. Then I noticed the Christmas presents. There was a puddle of something leaking out of the presents and onto the green rug underneath the tree. I couldn't tell what it was, but I could see the stain in the rug and I noticed that some of the liquid was getting to seep out onto the wooden floors. I got closer and the smell got even stronger. I reached out and poked the present closest to me. It was sort of squishy and the sound of wetness and paper followed after I removed my finger. I looked around and noticed that all the presents appeared to be leaking something. But how? I hadn't bought anything that would be leaking. There was a necklace for my mom, a collection of Stephen King books for my sister, a watch for my dad, shoes for my sister's fiance Carla, a watch for my boyfriend, a sweater for my friend Samantha. I started to inspect the tree for things now. Maybe something was stuck in the branches and rotting? But again, I found nothing. I crouched back down and grabbed one of the presents, pulling out onto the wooden floors in order to take a better look. I noticed that the present was very poorly wrapped. In fact, it looked like every single present had been wrapped by a four-year-old. I had definitely not done this. The presents had obviously been stolen and replaced with other items, but by whom and when? I had been home this entire week and I would have noticed an intruder. I carefully peeled back a bit of the wrapping paper on the present in front of me, which was a lopsided cylinder-shaped item and I threw up when I saw what it was. I'm at my friend's house now. The police came and sealed off my entire house to search for evidence. It had become a crime scene. Every single present contained a body part of my family members and Carla. These were distinguished a bit quicker due to some tattoos and scars on the parts that were found, although they are still running tests to make sure. And the others were yet to be identified. My cat was alright though. The police think they had been dead for quite a few days now, definitely before my sister sent me that text the other day. They don't have any leads. The only thing that the intruder left was a picture of me sleeping, which included a glove hand holding up my phone. The date on my phone was November 25th, which the police think that is the day of the presents were replaced. On the back of the picture, it said, Merry Christmas and blood. <laughs>